Happy round five TLT day, guys. It's uh, the Eels and the Tigers, our last one to go through for fantasy and then finish off with the super coach analysis here. And yeah, I want to go through a few concepts here and yeah, a couple of things to, to speak about with some of these players, obviously there. There are a few decent scores, 50 plus as, as always, a much better scoring game for the Eels than it was last week with a bit more ball in play. Obviously a fairly close game with a couple less tries in it as well. So this was an incredible scoring effort from Hopgood. There were a few people blowing up that I think at, you know, five, maybe seven or eight minutes left until half time. He'd obviously come on with, I believe, 20, yeah, well, he played the rest of the game. So 56 minutes that he played. So 25th minute he came in and he was on like four with uh, with 45 minutes left in the game and, and ended up scoring a 70. So Hopgood is an incredible, incredible player at that, that's for sure. And, and picked up a line break and obviously a try assist as well. In this one, with a couple of tackle breaks, some offloads, turnover tackle, big run meters as well at 170. So he really stood up in the absence of obviously Cartwright and, and then Moses as well. Speaking about players that, that stepped up, and uh, that's Clint Gutherson. Obviously with Hopgood, the you know, up and down nature of his scoring, at least you know when he's low, it's sort of in the 40s. And then when it's high, it's up near the 70. So you get that average out of exactly where he's priced out at that 60 coming into the season. So happy days on that front. We still don't have a lockout lifted yet. So yeah, we've got this one game to, to roll through. And Gutho. Gutho was the man in this one. Unfortunately, didn't get the win for him, but was absolutely involved in everything. Obviously the goals, but he's been part of that the whole time. And this point, Honda was obviously a little bit kicking in general play. He had a forced dropout in there. He had you know, the 170 run meters, one short of 170. Cooked him a point, but um, yeah, the try in there as well as the, the try assist uh, in that one. So... Obviously, this is, isn't what you're going to expect each and every game, but from Gutho under 600K, we know we, we, what we can see from him. And I didn't speak about him too much as a buy last week just because I wanted to see it in action. And we knew that the Tigers were you know, not as bad as, as once advertised. And uh, this was kind of the perfect game for Gutho. Got involved in everything apart from that miss at the end, obviously. So he's heavily going to be on our radars coming into this week, given he'll be under... 600k about 585 and he goes up a little bit i think his break even was about the 55 mark so probably goes up 8 or 10k and he uh yeah looms as, as a really solid wing fullback by if, if you want him or need someone like him at this price point you know given there's uh you obviously ponga's up a little bit higher for those that don't own him but uh yeah you can get guthrow over this couple month period potentially even holding through the origin period as well given he uh he doesn't play well, he won't play Origin, right? So that that helps him out as well as a potential buy. And that coincides with his mate, Dylan Brown, who obviously also really goes up in, in his scoring when when Moses is out. So both of them absolutely played exactly how you would have wanted with Moses out. And again, with both of them, we just didn't see it so far this year. So it was a little bit of blind faith that they'd just absolutely step up in Moses' absence. And as I said, with the, the fantasy scoring in this one being a lot higher, especially for guys that that really got involved. Brown as well as Lane. Yeah, really, really fit that bill, as I said. And, you know, no missed tackles for all three of those guys in this game. Hopgood, Gutho, Brown, and obviously Lane as well. So the Tigers weren't able to throw as much at them in a kind of a, you know, wayward kind of nature and herky-jerky and, and running sideways and getting missed tackles that way. Wasn't the case in this one. And these players played much better from that with Brownie there. 23 tackles for no misses the good run meters, the good tackle breaks. No offloads in this one, but a line break in there as well with some, with 222 kick meters, which, which is actually a little bit low compared to what I would have thought. You know, he had a 116 come from from Gutho there, and then you only had a little bit from from Blaze Talangi there with 31. So do expect this game to, uh, his games from now on, to have a little bit more on the on the kick meter side. Um, yeah, and I think that he's going to be a pretty solid scorer going forward. Now we've seen it. In this game, I do think that he's a, a much safer option now compared to what he was last week. And it's not definitely not going on a week late. You just don't, um, you just missed out on this score, which is a little bit frustrating. But um, you couldn't get everyone last week, right? There was, you know, cheapies to be had. And if you missed out on Galvin and, and the like, so yeah, you could probably likely only get one if you hadn't. Um, yes, people were still grabbing Terrell May last week, which which was an awesome trade in as well. So you couldn't get them all. You don't. You didn't miss out on a massive price rise. You just missed out on the points. And then their break-evens come right down again, which is lovely. And uh, yeah, expect Dylan Brown to be somewhere around the 720, 750 across the, the rest of the way, especially with this next couple of months. And expect Gutho to push his way closer to the 700K mark, probably averaging around the 50 mark 
rather than up near the 60s for, for this game here. Because if you take one of those tries away, you, you take a try and he just leaves a, a, tackle, uh, a try assist with, with the offloads, with the tackle breaks, and, and he's closer to that 50 mark, then, um, which is what you expect and is great as a purchase this week. So very, 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 very good. Uh, Sean Lane, big bounce back from him. He, he got in, involved in everything much more than he had in all of the previous weeks. So a good hold for those that did. He take that score and uh, and stop his his price dropping. That's for sure because yeah, he had a really high break even coming into this, and that just sets the sets the platform again back even. And yeah, from this one here, he can start making money as well, and hopefully get up into the six hundreds for those that did stick solid for that first month of footy because it um it was tough until this week. That's for sure. So hopefully some attacking sets to come. I have him in the head head squad in. Supercoach, so a much better score from him. I think we're still waiting for updates on that game, but I'll, I'll talk through that in a second. Stefano, absolutely running over Lusick, who I uh, is dead to me <laughs> in fantasy. Good bloke. Obviously, he's fine, but um, yeah, no good. Stefano, really, really good scores, man. He's, he's playing really well. 50 average now in his first four, first three games, I should say, and that's exactly what you would have wanted. The minutes are up there. He's you know turning into that player that we hoped that he would be rather than being sort of a stick around that 40 mark, being a bit average week to week, sometimes get a 40-odd, sometimes get a 30, sometimes get a 50-odd. Minutes are a little bit low, but they're trusting him for 53 minutes in the moment. He's doing great work in that time. So for anyone who was looking at him, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't stray away. But um, he's also gone up after this week. It'll be about 30-odd K. Um, so yeah, he'd be 620 or something like that, which you know, do you want to play that for Stefano? I feel like there's other better buyers who have a little bit more of a better track record as well. And, and that's what we're looking at in this game. It's track record. Can guys you know, push back into higher, ter- higher territories that they've been to before? And that's exactly what Gutho, Brown, and Lane did in this one as well. Uh, Regan was solid, 50 for him. Good efforts on that, but not a buy. Bateman, 47, and Papali. Let's talk about both of them. And, and these are the scores that we were worried about with them and them having on a regular basis, which is what we saw last year. I owned both of them through the back end of the year, and it was very much a, a, a lottery and a, a guess as to if they were going to go over 50 in that week or they were going to be a mid-40s guy and kind of plot around there. And that's what exactly what we've seen out of Bateman so far. He'll continue to lose some money with that 47. That slows it down a little bit, but you know, I think we can get Bateman closer to the early 600s than... He becomes an option. And then Isaiah Papali is going to go up and down between this type of scoring. If he's not getting any attacking stats, then he doesn't seem to have the base or enough of the base to be able to get into that 50 very regularly, even in that 80 minutes. And then some games, he doesn't play the full 80 either. So that's those two guys. The big news out of this one, obviously, let's talk about Olam first because he's got two doubles in a row. Very impressive scoring. And if anyone who grabbed him in round one or round two, use him as a looper, it's come out really, really well because... He's playing great, and he's super important for this side. So I'm really happy for Olam, really happy for the Tigers to get this win. And it probably just makes, you know, Hopgood, Gutho, Brown, Lane, these guys up top, the really important players in this team, a little bit more hungry you know, coming into next week to get that good score, uh, get that good win. I believe coming up against the Raiders, that's going to be just awesome tussle, hopefully plenty of uh, fantasy points for those that have plenty of Raiders or potentially a couple of Eels coming into this next week. We've got uh, Galvin there, the 44. So you end up with the sin bin. He's out for two weeks with the early guilty plea, which I think he'll take. Uh, most likely, I'm not sure if he already has, but um, if he hasn't at this point, that's what he will. Very likely. But two try assists in this one, one off a kick, obviously, and then one uh, just breaking the line. A little bit of um, a little bit of pap that reminded me of. And uh, who else was it? Munster. Munster in that uh, in the Origin one that, that got bust. Nico Hines, just a little bit that, you know, running out left and then dummy and go through. It was lovely to see. He's a very impressive talent. With him being out for two weeks, guys, he's going to go up another uh, something stupid, 60-odd K. He'll be up near 400K, and, and he's a clear hold because he has the ability to be the cash cow of the year. Obviously, that slows it down this week with a couple of weeks off, but he'll come back straight into this team, in my opinion. He's way too important, so... He's a guy to hold for for two weeks. And the unfortunate thing is we have a lot of these guys right now that we've held that are out for multiple weeks, whether you're still holding Cleary, whether you're holding like a Piakura at the moment. We're unsure what's going to happen with Joe Chan. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a few other guys that were you know, potentially still holding like a Wong or something like that if you are. 
and yeah, there's a few others. But anyway, there's so many guys we're holding at the moment. We're gonna be have to we're gonna have to rely on Sam Hughes this week, most likely. There will be a lot of people that trade him out, but anyone who's not, it could be the looper for this week, which is funny. Uh, but Galvin, hold on to uh, Sioni Finu. Samuela Fano, I should say, not Sioni. Um, in this one, yeah, Samuela. They're both playing the same team. But 42, he was absolutely crushing it. Just didn't get back on the park. So 38 minutes for him, over a point a minute. He's working really hard. He got a line break in this one. He's doing good things. If you still own, which is 5% of you that do, awesome score. You would just hope he came back on and got a few more minutes because he was looking really hot and heavy for a um, for a 50 score. That's for sure. All right, Cop- uh, Api Corosau, 40. This was one of those games that we were worried about that he does have in his game, unfortunately. Good thing here here with him is this type of game for him normally would end up in like a 68-minute roll. Keep those missed tackles. He doesn't have the goals, right? And he probably makes a few less because he's playing less minutes. So it's good to note that these type of games are him. These type of games for him are more of the 40 range rather than in the high 20s to 30. And then he'll have a much better game from this and uh, get those missed tackles sorted out and potentially get some attacking stats because there's absolutely nothing in this game. No tackle breaks, no offloads. Bit of kicking out of dummy half, which is awesome. I think we'll continue to see that from him. But yeah, 42 run meters, two goals, nothing much happening for him. Kicking the footy really well Yeah, for, for goals as well. He did miss that last one, which was from the sideline, but very close. But yeah, he'll be fine going forward with that 40. Hopefully a 50 plus for him next week. For, for, but for those that traded him in and captained him, it's a tough one, but do expect better from here. Caesar, 37. Playing pretty good, to be honest with you. The last two weeks have been great. First week, not so much. Off the bench, obviously. He'll start to make a little bit of money very soon if he can continue with these you know, 40 Rangers. Happy for him getting that field goal as well. It was a flat one, but it worked perfectly. Junior Tupo there, 37 for him. Nine tackle breaks in this one, so a much better game. Good to see him getting into that you know, into that work, coming out of trouble and um, yeah, getting away from defenders, that's for sure. Didn't get away from any of the, the top few guys that scored in this game anyway, did he? Probably snuck away from Lussick at one point. Not dirty at all, I swear. <laughs> uh, Seafarth, 37. If you're holding him, happy with the score. A couple of penalties, no good, but good to see him getting 48 minutes and plenty of work through the middle there. Uh, but that's with Fanua Bole. End up scoring 59, uh, getting 59 minutes as well. So, yeah, good to see him getting more minutes. Sivo with a try. Good to see him back. Well needed for the Eels, given their... Injury crisis out the back. Junior Palo there, a bit of a lower one for him. Three missed tackles, run meters were a little bit low. Um, didn't get a try assist like he did it you know, with Moses there. And then Blaze Talangi there with 3.34 in 80 minutes. So what we're looking at here is exactly what we saw last week. It was 20, tra- 20 tackles and three misses. He ran the footy for 110. He got one offload, he got one tackle break, and he got one line break assist. So I do expect him at 5.8. This could be a little bit more of a floor game. He didn't have an error. He didn't have a penalty. So that's great. There will be some games where he does get the odd try assist. He does get involved with a couple more tackle breaks, especially running for 110. So I do expect this to be somewhere near his floor, 30 to 35, which will be sweet. Um, maybe the odd 25 game, right? If he has a little bit of a shocker in, in some errors and the like with no attacking stats. And then he has sort of 45, I think, to maybe 50 at best upside with a try or something like that. So he's going to go up a decent amount again. Not too far. Probably another 30K, I think, will be the guess with that low break even near, near zero. And he becomes a really good target, I think, for next week. If he keep, maintains that spot at six, and I think he will. He played well enough for it. If he gets named again, I think he'll be very highly sought after. And there's a little bit of a thought for my team, which I'll get into in the round results, as to how I'm going to play the next few weeks because we've got a few guys we want to get back in our sides, don't we? Um, so Blaze is definitely one of those guys that can help facilitate that and and remove some of the dead wood in our sides, whether it's a cheap guy not scoring, or whether it's a mid-ranger that's not scoring well enough, Joey Lusick. Dave Clemmer, <clears throat> 33 and he's 47, average. Yeah, stay away. Madison, end up starting this one, still got the same minutes that he would off the bench. He actually scores better off the bench in this type of middle role. So get that switcheroo back. Hopgood, you know, sounds like he won't mind <clears throat> playing off the bench either. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, Fanua with 32. Offen Galway, 31. Charlie Staines, 30. Yeah, all average. Moretti with a decent score for him. 10 tackles, 5 tackle bars. Good on him. Uh, Kelma, 60 minutes in this one, 27. Dig- was the victim of uh, Lockie Galvin's hip drop, which, yeah, obviously not going to... He walked away from it, which is good, but not ideal. Uh, Buller with a try. 
and 150 meters, 26 is his score. So that just drops down his potential money making. Penasini obviously starts to become a little bit more of a worry with some with two low scores the last few weeks, so 24 in this one. The weird thing with him, guys, is the fact that he had five missed tackles, which he's normally up around the 20 makes and sort of the one or two misses, but things are a little bit off on that uh, right-hand side defensively. Obviously, without Cartwright, he has Yo know, Kelman now, and you know, when Kelman was out in the centers, we know what happened um, to him out there from the Panthers, so I'm not sure if that's what's affecting him at the moment but had an error, no attacking stats in this one, 24. That's the worry, but um, I think you still just got to keep holding and see what happens, especially if the Eels can kind of turn things on. Gutho does seem to create a little bit for himself during this time, and that's why he scores well. Brown, we'll have to see how that works, but he does have Blaze, uh, Penicini has Blaze on his side as well now, with obviously Brown's kind of switching between both sides, I believe, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's Penicini at the moment. Hold for now. Lussick, I am absolutely rage trading Lussick for sure. I've got guys like Taylor May, Morgan Smithies, and, and Lussick that I'm not super excited about at the moment, but I do think Lussick probably has the, the least chance of exceeding that at the moment, especially after getting you know, that losing that 20 minutes. Really needed him to go nuts in that second half. And I'm we need justice for Lussick as well, because he had a tackle break in that last run that he did off Appy. I think Appy's got the missed tackle, most likely, because he's got six of them, and Lussie didn't get the tackle break. That 24, that two extra points, guys, that's all we need. That's That, that gets me into the top 8,000. <laughs> um, but yeah, not good enough. Hilarious how this game works, right? Like, he doesn't have 22s in his range. He has high 20s to 30s when he doesn't play well. So we're in new territory on this one, but obviously it hasn't been a very good trade-in at all. We made a tiny bit of cash on him. We're going to lose cash on him this week. So it's a bit of a, a shocker. Let's say that. And what we do with Shockers, guys, is we fix them straight away. So that's what's going to happen in this one. And uh, we'll talk about that in the round results and obviously, yeah, trades and the like coming into this week. But um, Lustig, not good. Bit of a shocker. Unlucky for a part of it. And then serves us right in other parts because, you know, when he doesn't score that well, he's a 30s guy. Not a, not a 22, but he's a 30s guy. And that means he wouldn't make a lot of cash from his 520 or 515 or whatever we bought him from, right? So hands came on with the 20 uh, minutes and 11 points. He'll keep going down. So watch watch they, watch they them change hands. And Lustig and Hands will start soon. You watch that after a couple of losses. Um, yeah, that's that. Harper was low. And then Russell, 16. So two low ones in a row. So I think he's a he's very much a sell now, especially with that side losing Moses. He um, It becomes even harder for him. That's for sure. So that's that one with that game. We'll get straight into the Supercoach side of it. They still haven't updated things, I don't think. Let's check that while we're here. No, still live, I believe. No changes. Okay, cool. Uh, anyway, Tigers, Olam, two 80s in a row. Is he a buy coming off two doubles? That feels like a little bit trappy to me, but um, he's obviously going to make money given he's uh, at, you know, scored 81 and 82. Price at 423. He's got one game to make some more, make some cash. So it could be a decent cash grab, but... I feel like there's probably other better buys or maybe we even hold a trade. That'd be wild in Supercoach. Uh, Galvin, 66. That's awesome. We get a good cash jump out of him now. Uh, the first one at that. So 204K, he goes up massive with that uh, couple of try assists, which is good. Anyone else in this top section you don't need to think about? I had Chorus out and Lussick. So that hooking position for me has just gone absolutely off a cliff. Given who I started with, with Brandon Smith and Daddy Levi, and they both got 60s this week, it feels great. It feels great to, to trade for those guys, especially um, I left with the Levi trade in, in, trade in this head-to-head -head team pretty late as well, um, just because I didn't need to until the second, well, until the Sunday, and then made it. And as soon as I made it, Levi goes over for a try. I was like, cool, 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 cool. Um, and then scores 20 more than him. So that was that on the Chorus South side. Uh, on the other side, great to see Lane get a much better score of 62. So he's a clear hold now. He doesn't lose any cash on that. Gutho, obviously in the fullback position, becomes a little bit more of a buyer. But again, who would you sell him for? I don't think you're going to sell Turbo. He's probably due for a massive bounce back. You're not really going to sell. Um, you won't be selling Ponga. You know, Latrell is someone you could look at, but I just think it's it's probably silly to, to do that merrig around with trades, given the Ponga trade out didn't work. You got 80-odd and then 117. So... That's that with the fullback position. Just don't do it. Hopgood was great with 82. Keep solid with him. Blaze is the uh, center wing buyer this week. That's for sure. So have a look at him as a, as a definite option in your sides. And then, uh, yeah, Dill Brown with 42. He's a big worry at the moment, but I don't think you can sell him given how much he's you know he's in this. I do think that he goes up a bit as well. 
considering you look at the fantasy score of 61, and that only included a little bit of of a um, of kicking there. He did not get the line break in here, so yeah, it seems like fairly low um, hit up points there. And then tackle numbers 23 for none. That's completely normal. Four tackle breaks. I think that, yeah, he might be due one or two more. But we'll see what happens in updates on that one. Hopefully, he gets closer to a 50. But he's a big worry at the moment. And we need to get his score going. Lusick with the reserve on him. Hopefully, we uh, don't have to play him this week coming because he's been poor. And, uh, yeah, should have just kept Levi. Hey? Or, or Brandon Smith. That would have been better this week only. Brandon's been pretty poor overall. So that's this uh, that last game, guys. There's plenty, plenty to talk about from it. And uh, yeah, a lot of videos today. So please, please, um, yeah, I really hope that you guys can watch them all. I, I appreciate all that and, and getting in involved in that. Obviously, we've got team lists tonight, which is going to be hectic. And uh, we'll go from there. See you guys.